Hello YouTube, this is Bart from uh, the Homesteading Huffs. It's been quite a while since I've done a video and uh, had some stuff going on since the last video. Um, some of you might have already saw with uh, friends of mine on Facebook, who I think all my subscribers are. <laughs> uh, my father passed away a couple months ago and uh, so everything's been kind of up in the air. Um, taking care of business and stuff like that. Uh, he lived with us. So there's been a lot to do around the house um, as far as that goes. Um, but we're, we're getting back in the, in the groove of things and um, starting getting back worked on, working on some stuff. I planned on doing some outside videos for this one and uh, piecing together to show what I've done differently with the solar now. But um, my lawnmower has been a mess. Uh, tire was flat, got the tire fixed. Well, patched it up, you know, it was working okay. Started mowing one day, broke a belt. Between work and all that and how hot it was, I uh, ended up um, taking a little bit of time. Got the new belt, went out, started mowing, and the tire, now the tire wasn't holding. Tire goes flat, two laps around the yard, have to air it up again. That ain't working. <laughs> Did a little bit, you know, did the front yard just so it doesn't look so bad. Mowed paths in the backyard for the dogs and uh, quit because the compressor getting to the backyard was a pain. So finally got the wheel fixed. Took a couple weeks to get the a tube. Didn't want to put a new tire on it. Just put a tube in. It works great. I have two other ones that have tubes in them. They've been holding for years. Um, got the tube in. Went out. Uh, started mowing. Broke another belt. Uh, this one was the one that drives the wheels, so that's just brilliant. So, um, needless to say, I'm not shooting outside because the yard looks like crap. Uh, I'm sweating a little bit, though. but that's because I turned off the air conditioner so it wouldn't be so noisy in here. Uh, I think I'm going to turn it back on and see. Hopefully that doesn't make too much of a ruckus. Um, uh, the reason... I have a window unit now, is our main unit died, and uh, yeah, we we're going to get ripped off by the air conditioning company, so for the time being, we're just using a couple window units, and they're working brilliantly. Um, we've got one on this end of the house, one in our bedroom, and we, we almost never have to have both of them on. Uh, this one in the, in the kitchen will keep most of the house cool, and then when we go in there, we leave the door open and turn on that air conditioner and it keeps this end cool enough. Um, but anyway, let's get to the meat and potatoes. The real reason. Uh, the reason for this one is we got some new solar panels. Um, if you remember or if you watched any of my earlier videos, we had 400 watts of solar. 200 watts were mounted on the house, or, well not on the house, but on that rack that I built and they fed the house through a little microgrid tie inverter. Um, the other two we would transport, you know, I'd take it off the house, put it in the, in the motorhome, we'd go camping, and I'd have 200 watts of solar while we're camping and 200 watts while we were here, or here while we were camping, and then 400 watts when I got home. Turned out that was a big hassle. And eventually, this is the homesteading huffs, and our goal is to homestead, it, eventually get off grid, we'll be selling this house at some point. And um, so we went to Missouri Wind and Solar and uh, avoided shipping costs by picking them up locally. And we bought two 250 watt panels, 500 watts. And so those are now mounted to the house. Uh, I'm still using the same micro inverter. It's a 600 watt, so we're fine there. And um, I have three of the four other panels connected to the motorhome. Because um, for whatever reason, they make uh, those little 30 amp charge controllers. Um, even though 400 watt panels, my, my panels only put out 5.5 watts each, so that would be 22, or amps, I mean, 5.5 amps each. Um, at the best, the most they could. So at, at, at the best possible would be 22 amps with four panels underneath, you know, less than 75% of a. Uh, of a 30 amp charge controller, however, they are still limited to 350 watts for whatever reason. 
So I don't want to blow up my charge controller, so I just have three hooked up to that. I also have uh, one of my batteries that died. It was an experiment, didn't work out, got it cheap at a place, it wasn't a true deep cycle and it wasn't holding up. So I traded that one in and another old battery that I had and got two more deep cycle batteries from the big Walmart. Um, which, you know, long term, that, that's not my goal. We will be getting better batteries, but for now, that's what we're doing. Um, so I have three um, marine deep cycle batteries from Walmart. Uh, they're, they're rated at 122 amp hours each. Um, I have them run in parallel, so I'm still a 12 volt system out there, and uh, so that gives me, you know, roughly 360 amp hours. <clears throat> the exciting thing, what we did. Um, since I have these panels uh, hooked to the motorhome all the time, and eventually two of them will be permanently mounted on the roof. Probably get a 40 amp charge controller so I can still do uh, two and two and bring the other two with. Two would be permanently mounted on the roof. The other two I'll point at the sun and get a little better, you know, depending on where we park when we're camping. But in the meantime, since I have all this extra power, what we've done is... Um, 500 watts feed the house, um, 300 watts out there on 360 amp hours. We're get, basically getting wasted. Uh, those batteries were full all the time. Um, we haven't been able to camp much uh, since Dad passed either. So the batteries are just sitting out there, staying topped off. Solar panels are doing nothing, basically. So my bedroom, when we added on the bedroom in this house, I did the wiring myself, so I know how the layout works. And I put a uh, outside outlet for Christmas lights, because, you know, that's a great thing to do. So uh, we wouldn't have to go in and out to plug in the Christmas lights. You just flip a switch in the bedroom, boom, Christmas lights on. Well, the last outlet before that, um, it comes in, the, the power comes in the one end of the bedroom, wraps around the whole bedroom, and then goes up to the to the ceiling fan um, and light. The light, the outlet before the switch, I disconnected. So there's power coming into that outlet, but it doesn't continue on through the circuit, um, which killed that switch outside and the two power outlets on either side of our bed, where we plug our phone chargers, the clock radios, and um, there's a table lamp and also the overhead light is, is dead at, the, at that point. Um, what I did then is I made a suicide cord, <clears throat> which I don't recommend, but you know, I did it, so whatever. I had a 100 foot cord that the dog had chewed off the one end anyway, so I put another male, so it's got a male on both ends. Um, plugged one into that Christmas light outlet and one into the motorhome which has an inverter that runs off the solar panel under the batteries. So what I did was basically half of our bedroom is off-grid completely. I also ran an extension cord um, along the wall from the outlet behind, beside the bed to under the desk and I power my desktop computer um, off of that too. So that's running off-grid. Basically everything in our bedroom is now off-grid except for the window unit. Um, there are one, two, four hot outlets through the grid, but three of them are completely empty, and the other one only has the window unit. Uh, the window unit, um, I don't have enough solar to run an air conditioner. Uh, if you do any research online, not many people do, unless you spend thousands of dollars. But it's working great. Um, we watched a movie last night with our projector system after the sun went down. Got up this morning, battery was at 12.6 volts, so it had you know 85% or so, 90% of its charge still. Um, within about an hour of having full sun, the batteries were fully charged. Um, if I run the computer, the desktop computer, which eventually, when we're off-grid, off-grid, we will ditch the desktops, get laptops or tablets. Um, but, as of right now, I can run my desktop 
completely off grid and during the daytime it doesn't even dent the batteries it's just the solar panels I went out there and I had um, it was kind of late in the afternoon I think it was after 3 anyway turned on my computer went out and checked and I was bringing 14 between 13 9 and 14 1 so 14 amps coming out of my three solar panels into the into the batteries okay <laughs> I had the desktop computer on the fan and the light ow and a cat came up hello kitty jumped on my lap sorry for the weird edit thing uh, my mother called so I'm gonna have to call her back in just a moment I'll, I hopefully I can merge these two videos <laughs> if you're seeing this it worked anyway bedroom is completely off-grid except for the air conditioner and the uh, house has 500 watts now instead of 400 watts which most of the time was only 200 watts uh, I've been tracking the tracking the usage on the calendar and right now I'm on pace for a really good electric bill um, if it was as, if the usage was as little as it's been this past week um, I would be sub $50 electric bill as it is I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna be around $80 range this month with the air conditioner running and all that stuff uh, thinking about having the uh, house off-grid you can tell the angle changed didn't it um, having the bedroom off-grid and the rest of the house on it's kind of a cool phenomenon because I uh, I had yesterday the middle of the day so the sun was doing great had that you know 14 amps coming in my computer was on my desktop computer was on and at the time I didn't have either air conditioner running because it wasn't it wasn't super hot in the house yet and um, I went out and checked and with my computer running desktop computer running plugged into the wall which goes out to the camper my electric meter was running backwards so that's always cool um, and I have discovered uh, when the Sun is at its peak and the uh, I'm getting good power if the air conditioners aren't on either one of those aren't on but the refrigerator is running it's still my meter is creeping backwards just a hair I'm very excited to see what happens in the fall when uh, it cools down and the solar panels will work more efficiently because they're not uh, hot you know the hotter it gets the less efficient they are the cooler it is the better so right now you know if it's 90 degrees outside I'm not I'm not generating as much power as I would if it was you know 50 degrees outside so I'm curious to see how it goes the other change we did as to why our electric bill I think why our electric bill is doing so much better than years past um, I'm sitting here in the kitchen and I'll uh, change the angle a little bit because back behind me besides the, the dishes over here that I did but didn't put away back here is our you know, the, the, the stove, the black, nice fancy black stove, is now just decoration and to hold stuff. Because we haven't turned that stove or the oven on in over a month. What we do have is a new wave cooktop. I hope you can still hear me. And we just got a new wave oven. Uh, they both run off of uh, 110 instead of the 220 line. Uh, I think the oven runs about 1500 watts and the uh, little hot plate thing uh, for cooking pans it changes you know depending on how hot you put it. Uh, I do know we put it in the camper one time that's a thousand watt inverter and if you keep it on the medium or lower setting it'll run off that thousand watt inverter and it will boil water relatively fast. Um, so we cook like I said, we don't use the stove. The only thing we use the stove for since we got that new wave cooktop is if we have multiple things that we need to cook because it's a single burner. Sometimes you'll cook the one and then just put it on the stove on low just to keep it warm while you're cooking the other thing. But that new wave oven, we're loving it. Uh, cooks twice as fast. You don't have to preheat it. You're not running up the big oven. You're not opening the door to check on it and blasting the whole house with hot air. Um, it's a little warm right, right underneath the cabinetry over there you know we pull it out but you know that little area might be a little warmer than the rest of the house but it's not like running a big oven um, might do more on that later if you, um, 
on the on the cooking stuff but this is little stuff that we're doing in preparation for the big move um, things that are more cost effective you know more cost effective more efficient um, next on our list is the washer and dryer but uh, we got to get to where things are more efficient to use and uh, but still usable you know we don't want to be living out somewhere where we're you know rubbing sticks together and trying to make a fire to quick cook us uh, you know boil a cup of coffee um, but anyway uh, the cool thing the reason for the re-edit was that yeah running my computer off the grid works brilliantly and I so I can be sitting on my computer desktop energy hog and my meter still going backwards Gotta love it. so anyway so uh, it's been so long since I did a YouTube video, I forgot what I used to say at the end of the video, my little catchphrase or whatever you want to call it, and I don't have one now, so um, I'm not going to go watch a video and then re-edit my ending. So anyway, I uh, hope you're having a good time, uh, I hope things are going good wherever you're at, and I hope you enjoyed the video, so until next time, I'll see you.